this whole video is basically dedicated to a technique that I've demonstrated in other videos, but haven't really explained in any great depth. As you can see here, I've got a painting that has been developed to a point, it's nowhere near finished, and even as far as values go, it's pretty rough. The main thing that I'm looking for, though, is that all the major elements that I want, uh, the major objects and the major characters are all present, and a lot of the big decisions have been made, compositionally and in terms of where everything is. That leaves me with a lot of little things to figure out. What we're going to do here is we're going to take this painting, which is, for all intents and purposes, just one big flat mess. I've got it split up into many different layers, but I haven't really been organized in any way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to flatten it all down and create copies of that and mask out certain sections. What I'm looking to do is produce a series of layers that go through the depth of the scene. So rather than focusing on, say, I have my little gnome character on this layer and my orc character on this layer and a rock on this layer, I'm really focusing on one layer being everything really close to the camera and then a step back from that is going to be another layer and it just goes into the depth of the scene. This allows me to clarify what sits in front of what, and it allows me to play with that depth and control it a little bit more clearly. To start with, I want to decide what the major layers of depth are going to be. So I'm roughing in the borders with different colors. I'm not being precise, this is just so I have something that I can refer to later on. Once that's done, I copy the entirety of my illustration. I mentioned before that we're basically making a flat version of what we've produced so far. I like to use Photoshop's Copy Merged and Paste in Place, which is Control-Shift-C and Control-Shift-V, to just create a, flat, a fresh flat layer, leaving everything below it intact. So all of my stacks of layers that really aren't important, but I like to keep them for posterity as long as it doesn't impede the performance of my computer. I duplicate this flattened layer once for every single layer of depth that I want. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to use Photoshop's layer mask. Uh, it's in your uh, color, it's in your layer palette where you have a little icon that looks like a rectangle with a circle pulled out of it. This allows you to work non-destructively. Alternatively, you could just take an eraser and erase all the parts that you don't want from a layer. But the problem with that is that if you want to get part of it back, if you made a mistake and you didn't catch it until it was too late to undo, you wouldn't be able to get it back. You'd have to start that over again or at least do some you know, ridiculous stuff to get it back. Using a layer mask means that you basically add this additional section. When you click that little uh, icon uh, in the layers palette, it will create a little thumbnail next to your layer thumbnail that by default is filled with white. And when you paint on it with black, it will function like an eraser. And if you paint on it with white, if you ever decide that you need to get something back, painting on it with white will bring that back, which is very useful. You can see here that I've started to put a lot of this weird arbitrary pink all over the screen. This is because while I'm erasing from a layer, I want it to be very obvious to me which parts I've erased and which parts are still remaining in the layer that I've created. Everything above the layer that I'm working on is hidden for now and I'm gradually working my way up. But beneath the layer that I'm working on, I keep another layer that is filled in with a very garish pink. Usually I work with a really rich magenta because you just, you can't miss it. And it's usually not something that you're gonna see in your illustration. In our case, we're just working in black and white, so it's even easier. But I've toned down the pink on this because I don't want people's eyes to bleed while they watch this video.
the biggest benefit of this entire process is that it forces you to make all the little decisions that while we were painting, you know, organically and energetically and just jumping from one part to, to another, we were able to skip. For example, I've got a lot of edges on these characters that are undefined. It's not entirely clear where their silhouette ends and where their surroundings begin, where the background starts. And so it's all very muddy together. And now while there is a lot of benefit to having strategically muddy or soft edges that just kind of blend from one to the other, you want to be in full control of that and you want it to be the result of your own decisions. And so by having to break these things down into depth, you have to go through them and really decide where does the hair end? Where does this person's skin end? And you have to make these very clear, solid decisions. And you'll frequently find that, you know what, maybe I want this hair to extend a little bit further than the actual illustration shows, and you extend that shape out as you're masking, and that's totally fine because we're going to deal with that, and we're going to clean it up a little bit afterwards. So here's where you just make those clear, solid decisions so you can move forward. And we're always going to be able to change them later on, and there will be more you know, energetic, organic working near the end. But for now, we want to take what we've put together and just tidy it up so we can be more organized. And so it'll just be a lot easier to keep everything in control. So now that all my layers are separated out, we're going to start cleaning things up as I mentioned before. This means going back in and filling the parts of the layers right up to the edge of that mask. So same thing as I mentioned before, sometimes when I'm masking, I've decided that I want to extend an edge further than it was initially. And so it will pick up some of that background color. And so by taking the values from inside whatever this layer is meant to hold and pushing them all the way to the edge, we end up with that nice clean edge, which we can decide later on whether or not we want to keep it. Also, on other paintings that I do, which have a lot more space and distance to work with, especially those in like uh, large landscapes or stuff like that, I will take advantage of the fact that I can put layers in between these major depth layers of my illustration, just drop in an empty layer and I can put gentle little bits of fog in them. And by fog, I mean basically taking a big soft brush and very gently putting in a little bit of a much, much lighter value. I'll usually set these layers to the blend mode of lighten because I don't want it to mess up any uh, values that are actually already bright. I only want it to affect the darker ones. And what this does is it allows me to push the layers underneath further back in terms of how far away they feel like they are from the viewer and from the layers above them. It allows us to extend that space. In this particular illustration, we don't really have the benefit of being able to use fog quite in that way, but I'll still use uh, darker, uh, like soft marks to separate things out and make those dis uh, distinctions a lot clearer. So the same principle still applies, you're just kind of leveraging it differently to continue to separate these things out.
Now this whole process is obviously pretty tedious, but by doing it separately, rather than trying to be organized all the way throughout the painting, I'm allowed to be a lot more free and organic earlier on, which helps me focus more on design, composition, and narrative, and the whole storytelling aspect, rather than being really focused on the nitty gritty of this boring stuff. Once it's all cleaned up, we'll be able to move on to coloring. So that's gonna be the next video, but we wanna make sure that we are focusing in on making all of, all of those small decisions. And there's still gonna be more decisions to make later on, but this puts us in a much stronger position to move forwards rather than having a mess trailing behind us the whole time. So that should mark the end of this video. Um, next is going to be coloring and I've got a few interesting techniques to show with that. <laughs>